from Atlantic City with a battle of two of the best big men the league has to offer. The A-10's Defensive Player of the Year sophomore C.J. Aiken goes head-to-head -head with the Conference Player of the Year, St. Bonaventure's Andrew Nicholson. Next. in Atlantic City. Well, already today in the Atlantic 10 tournament, the number one seed has been eliminated. Now we have game number two. It's a rematch from a little more than a week ago. St. Joseph's against St. Bonaventure. So here's the bracket right now. The eight seed, UMass, just defeated Temple 77 to 71. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, along with John Griffin. You know what upsets are like, don't you? Today we have St. Joseph's against St. Bonaventure on the heels of UMass upsetting Temple. What do you think about this matchup? Well, I think we're going to see a replay of what we saw nine days ago, which was a double overtime game. This entire season has been topsy-turvy with a ton of close games, and I expect more of the same here this afternoon. Well, St. Bonaventure has the Atlantic 10's Player of the Year, Andrew Nicholson. He was the Rookie of the Year. Then he was a second-team honoree. Then a first-team honoree. And now, all of a sudden, he is a Player of the Year, and he is remarkable. Tom, I, I would even use the word dominant. One of the things he's done over the years is expanded his game. He's always been a great shot blocker and rebounder, but now he can make threes. He made a couple big threes in the last game against St. Joseph's. He scored over 2,000 points in his college career. All right, well, St. Joseph's will have to contend with that. St. Bonaventure will have to contend with the fact that St. Joseph's, well, they really spread it around. They're a very balanced team, and when they're playing great basketball, they have four, sometimes even five guys in double figures, led by Carl Jones. He's been a terrific scorer throughout his entire career, getting a tremendous amount of help, especially from beyond the arc from Langston Galloway. And then Ronald Roberts coming off the bench. He's the best in the Atlantic 10. C.J. Aiken, the defensive player of the year from Atlantic City. It's the second game today. The Atlantic 10 tournament. St. Bonaventure, St. Joseph's. The tip is next. Ladies and gentlemen, our guitar player is sick. But don't worry, we found a replacement. Mr. Peter Friend. I love the dance floor in the house. Unexpected pleasures are the best part of life. Why not drive one every day? Introducing the all-new Verano. It's unexpected and unprecedented luxury for a car this size. Nice. The all-new Verano from Buick. DonorsChoose.org are working together to put academic and athletic supplies back into our schools. And you can join the NCAA in supporting the needs of teachers' projects. From athletics to academics, find out how you can help future student athletes at NCAA.org slash fund the future. Are you ready to crash the boards? The Atlantic 10 Men's Basketball Championship heads into Atlantic City for another three-day weekend of college hoops action. Don't miss the excitement at Boardwalk Hall, March 9th, 10th, and 11th. What a weekend. Single session tickets start at just $26. And family four packs are $79 purchased in advance. A10 tickets are on sale now at the box office or through Ticketmaster. For information, visit AtlanticCityNJ.com. Division I student athletes have higher SAT and ACT scores than college bound students. The number of us receiving diplomas is at an all-time high. African-American males who are student athletes are 10% more likely to graduate. Still think we're just a bunch of dumb jocks? You need to do your homework. There are over 400,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. Nine days ago, St. Joseph's and St. Bonaventure, they were involved in a heck of a ball game. Matt Wright's three-pointer with 1.9 in regulation puts St. Bonaventure up by two. 
Then a foul was called, and C.J. Aiken made both free throws. But then Andrew Nicholson's three-pointer with 2.3 in overtime sent the game into double overtime. St. Bonaventure had three threes in double overtime. They won it 98-93. We should be so lucky that we would have the same kind of game this afternoon. The Hawks 20 and 12, St. Bonaventure 17 and 11. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for this afternoon's ball game, and we will begin with St. Joseph's. This has been the starting lineup that Phil Martelli's had for most of the year. Great backcourt. They have over 1,000 points between them. Carl Jones and Langston Galloway. Kanasevic, Aiken, and Darius Quarles. Ron Roberts will come in for Quarles, and he's the sixth man of the year. For St. Bonaventure, a lot of people forget they were banged up at the start of the year. Jordan Gathers will make the start in the backcourt with Charlon Kluth. And then the front court of Daquan Cook, the veteran, Andrew Nicholson, and Demetrius Conger. Well, St. Bonaventure's bench, and they are the higher seed, the four seed, so they'll be wearing the white for this ball game. St. Joseph's with the crimson and gray. Let's take a look at the series history, which also includes that game nine days ago. St. Joseph's leads 43 to 20. This is the 64th meeting between the two, and it's the fifth time that they will face each other in the Atlantic 10 tournament. Phil Martelli was an assistant coach under who? John Griffin. And now he's in his 17th year on Hawk Hill, the all-time leader in wins with 320 victories. Mark Schmidt, well, he was in the Atlantic 10 before with the Xavier Musketeers and his assistant coach. This is no doubt his best year as the head coach of St. Bonaventure. The official for, officials for today's ball game, Gary Prager is the referee. There's Lamar Simpson and there's John Hughes. And we are about ready to get underway. We hope it's as good as the first game. UMass upset the number one seed, Temple. Now St. Bonaventure against St. Joseph's. And the tip is controlled by the box. We'll see man-to-man -man defense most likely throughout the ball game for both teams. Nicholson, first touch of the day. He's battling against Halil Kanasevic. I like that matchup. Kanasevic misdirects the first shot. Well, it'll be interesting also to see if St. Joseph's decides to trap Nicholson in the low post. Right now, they just played him kind of one-on-one -on -one in the low post, but Nicholson has been so dominant. And the other thing that he's been able to do is step beyond the arc and make a couple threes, and he did it very effectively in this last game against St. Joseph's, particularly at the end of regulation and overtime. To the particulars on St. Joseph's, their first 20-win season since the 07-08 year. They had a tough couple of years because they were young. They defeated Charlotte in a tight game until the end in the opening round. They've won two Atlantic 10 tournament titles. Both teams have missed their first shots of this game. St. Bonaventure, a resurrection of an old 17 wins. Cook with the miss. Nicholson with the offensive board. Phil Martelli said we can't allow that again. They had 20 rebounds on the offensive end the last time these two teams faced each other. Yeah, that was a big part of uh, the success of St. Bonaventure. And I said to Mark Schmidt before the game, what is really a key to your win? And he said, rebounding the basketball. It's something that we do so well. They do. Now, Charlotte against St. Joseph against Charlotte, I think they did a much better job on the glass. But you're absolutely right, Tom. 20 offensive rebounds were earned by the Bonnies against the Hawks and made a huge difference. They'll give some continuation for Kluth, so he'll get the basket and go to the free throw line. Foul is on Kenesevic. This is a good, strong drive to the basket by Kluth. He's only a sophomore, 6'3", 195 pounds, but very strong player. Before he came to St. Bonaventure, he went to prep school in the Canary Islands. How about that? Well, we've seen actually a couple guys in this league who've done the same thing, and it seems like it's almost like, I'll call it a stopover for guys that have played in basketball outside the U.S. that kind of want to get acclimated to U.S. basketball. Sometimes they work on improving their grades, but also get themselves ready. It's almost like a, a prep school sort. St. Bonaventure with the early lead. It's 3-0. Here's Galloway along the baseline. They swing it around the perimeter. Quarrel will take a 17-footer, and it's good. His second half of the year has been way better than his first year, plus the first half of this year. Well, he looks to shoot the ball much more. He's been much more aggressive. Now, obviously, Ronald Roberts will come into the game. 
for him, and that's another strong drive by Conger. These two teams are pretty well balanced. I mean, both teams rely on getting good quality of play from the three or four players. So you see Conger there going strong to the basket. We saw Kluf do the same thing. Now Sevick working against Nicholson down low. Backs his way in. Double team, and that'll happen a lot with him. Ooh, he five. Patience, patience, patience. And Mark Smith was concerned about Kanasevic coming into this game because he's such a good passer. He thinks they're re he's really a key. That time he double teams Kanasevic, but Kanasevic finds an open man. In the early part of the field goal statistics, each team with two. Kanasevic also a, a transfer from Hofstra. We say also because in game one we saw Chaz Williams, the transfer from Hofstra. Those two guys were teammates for Tom Cora. He had such a big impact in the upset against the Temple Owls by the UMass Minutemen. 7-4 St. Bonaventure on top. Three minutes into the first half. Just to give you some numbers, St. Joseph shoots 47% from the floor, 36% from beyond the arc. They play very good defense from beyond the arc. Here's in, and he's fouled going up. Well, John, we talk about patience, and this is what Kanasevic had right here, because he could have given it up and maybe turned it over. Yeah, no panic. He, you know, he realizes he's being double-teamed, and if somebody's open, and I think he does a terrific job of finding Darius Ball. A lot of guys in the low post, when they see the trap, they get rid of the ball quickly. Kanasevic really has a presence and, and a kind of state of mind where he's under control and he'll find the open man. He's the former Pennsylvania Player of the Year, C.J. Aiken. He was also among the nation's leaders in block shots. For a near seven-footer, he's pretty good from the free throw line. 71% from the free throw line. And he just made two, and he's made this a one-point ball game. The Bonaventure began cold, 0 for 3. Now 3 for its last three. How about this pressure defense by St. Joseph's, and it causes Cook to travel, and the turnover is forced. A bit uncharacteristic for St. Joseph's. I mean, they don't usually put that much pressure on the ball. Mark Schmidt obviously not happy with the last possession, but I think Phil Martelli, all in all, is really happy with the way his team has been playing of late. And, you know, he's done a good job, I think, of bouncing back from disappointing losses. And I know the home game against Richmond was a disappointment. But, you know, his team has been resilient, particularly with a bunch of young guys. Substitution for St. Bonaventure. Matt Wright is in the game for the first time. Jordan gathers out of the ball game. And this is down by one. Here's Pana Sevek against Nicholson. How about that off the number? That is a very athletic move to get a very athletic guy off his feet. He's an uncanny player. I mean, sometimes these motions get the best of him, but for the most part, he's made a huge difference at St. Joseph's. Talk about a huge difference. Daquan Cook makes his presence known with that wraparound slam dunk to give St. Bonaventure a one-point lead. Well, an assertive play going to the baskets. That's the second time he's been able to get in the lane and pass this defender. Gattisevic wants it again. Spin move against Nicholson. Circus shot under the hoop. Andrew Nicholson's a better defender than that. He's given up two baskets in a row. One point lead for St. Joseph's. Aiken on Nicholson. We mentioned two of the best big men in the Atlantic 10. And we have a carry called on Andrew Nicholson. Two turnovers for St. Bonaventure, one point lead for St. Joseph's. How about Kanasevic against Nicholson? The up, the under, and the lay in. But Daquan Cook from the perimeter, a thunderous slam. Are you ready to? A car doesn't just move you around. It also becomes part of your family. It's the one you can count on to get you there safely and to fit your family's busy life. Now's the time to make the jump to Toyota. And we make it easy with good deals and great service. With Toyota Care, you save money and drive with peace of mind. Don't wait. See Schultz Toyota Scion in Bradford.
of people have called Salino and Barnes. Been in a car accident? The choice is easy. Call Salino and Barnes. At JVC, students come first. My classes are just the right size. Everyone can participate. My dean helps me keep on track so I can graduate on time. The financial aid office really helped me make the right choices. JBC offers associate and bachelor degree programs, flexible schedules, scholarships, financial aid, and career placement. My schedule fits my life. I'll complete my bachelor degree in just over three years. Schedule your career planning session today. Find us online or on Facebook. All right, so this first half, St. Joseph's on top by one, 10 to nine. Let's take a look at St. Joseph's tournament history as we begin this appearance. Their first appearance in the A-10 tournament was back in 1983. 33 wins, a pretty good winning percentage. Two titles, 86 and 87. Those two are kind of a surprise. Now for St. Bonaventure, their tournament history, well, their first appearance was in 80. They haven't been in the tournament that often. And I think that's why, in part, uh, the success of Mark Smith this, team, this year is kind of historic in its own way, and it's reflective of a, a huge step forward in the improvement of St. Bonaventure basketball since he arrived. Now, Jimmy Barron did a terrific job when he was the head coach there at St. Bonaventure, and then Mark Smith has done a terrific job as well. Carl Jones' first shot of the day off the mark. So St. Bonaventure with the ball. It's Matt Wright. The in Kloof in the backcourt. Into the ball game for the first time is Chris Johnson. Mickelson gets Aiken off his feet. I believe Kanasevic touched that last. And here comes Ron Roberts. The sixth man of the year is in for C.J. Aiken. This guy really could be a starter. He certainly, he, he certainly could. He plays starter minutes. And so Phil Martelli relies on him to get about 30 minutes in a game. But uh, he's pr as productive as a starter, and he seems to have accepted that role. For St. Bonaventure. Wright didn't start, but he's just gone there. Turnaround jumper for Nicholson. And he's given St. Bonaventure to the lead. I think that's the part of his game that's improved the most well, this year. Tom, that's a big time shot. I mean, that's an NBA kind of shot. And that's something I've never seen really in his game. It's something I think he's had it in the same year. Walls missed that one. Nicholson with the rebound. St. Bonaventure with the lead. Nearly six minutes into the first half. Five on the floor and includes Roberts off the bench. Johnson called for a traveling violation. That's the third turnover for St. Bonaventure. Well, this is the move you were talking about. Yeah, this is Nicholson in the low post. And he's pretty well defended here by Ronald Roberts. But watch this. He fades away. And in the NBA, you're not really able to turn and go forward closer to the basket. You have to get really comfortable with those shots. And obviously, Andrew Nicholson has worked on that part of his game. Andrew Nicholson worked in the offseason. You know, he's the score, he was the scoring leader in the Atlantic 10 during the regular season. He worked in the offseason with Bobby Martin, a big man coach up in Boston. And Bobby has watched him during the course of the year, and it's really helped his game. It's helped his conditioning. And a Sevic lost it, picked up by Roberts. Jones open for three. No good. 0 for 4 for three for St. Joseph. And a foul called inside against St. Bonaventure. Andrew Nicholson, uh, I asked some of the players who worked against him, like Michael Eric from Temple at the big man camp. I asked, uh, what's the difference in Andrew Nicholson this year? He said, well, he's smart, so he, he's understanding the game more. They said his footwork has just been outstanding this year. Well, the other thing I've noticed about his game, Tom, is he's not uh, getting uh, being forced to sit on the sideline because he's fouling unnecessarily. He's doing a better job of staying in the game. And, you know, we talked about Kanasevic already scoring two field goals on Nicholson, and that's a bit of a surprise. But I think in part because Nicholson wants to make sure he stays in the game. By the way, DeCorn Cook checks out of the ballgame with two fouls. Kind of seven. That's not part of his game, and he missed the three. Well, he's already taken two threes, and I think they're a bit ill advised. Now, Phil Martelli doesn't seem too upset about it, but nonetheless, kind of seven is only about a 27% three-point shooter. Hawks uh, have not hit a three in this half, and there's a five-second violation on Kluth. Well, the officials are playing this one pretty tight this afternoon. Three turnovers. In the last four trips for St. Bonaventure, Kloof checks out. 
you know, Mark Schmidt has a pretty simple way of looking at the game, which I totally agree with, and it's, I think, kind of an outgrowth of his work with Thad Mata and, and, and Skip Prosser, but it's to rebound to take care of the basketball and defend. Taking care of the basketball means don't turning it over, and I think he's got to be a bit surprised that his team has turned the ball over in these situations because St. Joe's, again, is not known to necessarily pressure the basketball and force you to maybe make uh, difficult passes or take uh, force yourself to take a timeout. John, the officials were talking at the scorer's table because apparently Yusu Endoy, number 21 for St. Bonaventure, is not in the scorebook. Instead, he's listed as number 35. Gary Prager, the referee, is going over to take a look at the official scores book. And John Hughes is coming over here. All right, so it's a technical foul called against St. Bonaventure, so there will be two free throws for St. Joseph's and the ball. Well, that's a bit unusual to me. I mean, certainly in Division I college basketball, you don't expect that to happen. John Hughes explained it as an administrative technical foul. So no team an, foul. An interruption technical foul. So it result in two foul shots by Langston Galloway, who's a terrific foul shooter. Mark Schmidt really uh, just wants to understand this better. This is such an unusual call. And you just kind of ask yourself, how is it that uh, someone's Honestly, name is not in the official scorebook, but the number is not aligned with the jerseys wearing. Right, it's it's number 35 in the book. Yusu Endoy is in the book, but he's number 21. He's listed in the, the, the official stat book as number 35. I don't know if it's a misprint because the the handout that the Atlantic 10 gives out during the the course of the tournament has him as number 35. And the stats and everything that we've watched for Endoy has been number 21. I don't know whose who's fault that is. I don't know, Tom. I can only tell you this. As a coach, I'd be so well, upset that's what at I, somebody. That's what I'm asking yeah, you. I'd be so <laughs> upset at somebody. And, and you know, I'd immediately, and then Phil Martelli was my assistant, I'd look at Phil and oh, say, yeah. okay. And, and then I'd look at the manager. But, uh, you know, I can't explain it because, I, you know, in all my years of coaching, that's never happened. Well, 11-11. Galloway made one, missed one. St. Joseph's with the ball. An administrative technical foul, so there's no team foul. A lot of times if there's a technical foul call, it goes to the team foul category, too. And then Ron Roberts gets knocked to the floor. It'll be against Johnson. Third team foul for St. Bonaventure. First on Johnson. On one hand, I, I always like guys to fight through screens. I just don't like them to knock down the guy setting the screen. So Roberts is a big guy, too. So when, he's fall, when he falls, he's going to fall with a thud. Here's Jones for three. It's good. First three of the day for St. Joseph's. And they can score him with the best of them. Well, we talked in the open about the balance. So certainly Jones is a guy that can get on the board. Kanasevic has gotten on the board. Ronald Roberts has had some great games. And Langston Galloway. Carl Jones has scored a double figures, including that game against Charlotte, which you just saw in 10 consecutive games. Now St. Joseph's forces the turnover. Kanasevic kind of like a point guard. Oh! Well, just as we said, he's kind of like a point guard. Phil Martelli has called him a point forward. A lot of times, they'll run the offense through Kanasevic because of his hands and his, uh, his ball skills. Well, there, he helps with the steal and then is able to finish the product off. This is good defense. Well, this is something that I think, let's just stop and hear you guys. Let's just see this double team. I don't think St. Bonaventure's prepared for this. All right, and let's just roll it from here. This has been disruptive so far in this game that's resulted in a couple easy baskets for St. Joe's or certainly some more possessions. So St. Joseph's is coming out trapping these ball screens, and I think it's catching St. Bonaventure off guard. Well, he read right where that is going to be. We'll see this from time to time with St. Joseph's. Look at this shot. I like the way St. Joe's throws the ball to the rim. We saw it earlier this afternoon when UMass did the same thing. 
to Carter, and they'll, they'll do it oftentimes to Putney, and St. Joe's has been very effective throwing the ball to Ronald Roberts or C.J. Aiken. Ball four run for St. Joseph's, a little more than five minutes. On his last nine trips, they have four turnovers. Last ten trips, they have four turnovers with six field goals. It's six for six. Andrew Nicholson does a great job there. A little left-handed, kind of baby hook shot. Another tough shot, but certainly something that he's added to his game. Condor will check back into the ball game. So will C.J. Aiken in just a moment. St. Joseph's up by three. Chris Wilson, the freshman in the ball game from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Here's Galloway, his first shot of the day. Doesn't get the bounce. And Andrew Nicholson will be credited with the rebound. Proof is fouled by Carl Jones. Well, St. Bonaventure is down by three, but on the play of Andrew Nicholson, they're hanging in there. The big guy is playing great basketball. When you need tires, think Schultz. You have a lot riding on your tires, so come to the experts at Schultz. Free mounting and balancing, free tire rotations, and buy with confidence that we have the lowest prices on tires in the area. We carry all your trusted brands like Firestone, BF Goodrich, Michelin, Goodyear, and many more. When you need tires, think Schultz. 11 locations to serve you. Schultz, best selection, best price guaranteed. Team Chevy, located in Olean, New York, is your Chevy car, truck, or SUV headquarters. Team Chevy takes great pride in providing our customers with quality American-made vehicles. Team Chevy is not your everyday Chevy dealer. We understand that you, the customer, is our top priority, and that's why our highly motivated sales staff goes the extra mile to ensure that all your questions and needs are met. If you're in the market for a quality vehicle, stop on down and view the all-new American-made Chevy line of vehicles. Team Chevy, your car and truck headquarters. Welcome to our new Serta mattress department at Bessaker and Koss. Countless comfort selections to choose from, like the new Serta Eye Comfort, with advanced microfoam and gel cooling technology to keep you comfortable all night long. Queen mattresses from $3.99. Free delivery and removal of your old mattress. Save on appliances. Save on TVs. And now, save on mattresses at Bessaker and Koss in Olean, where we built our business on service. Oh, back inside uh, the boardwalk hall, St. Joseph's on top, 16-13. Oh, we have uh, a lot of award winners in this ball game. How about Andrew Nicholson, of course, the player of the year. C.J. Aiken, the defensive player of the year. And Ron Roberts, the sixth man of the year. You know, and when I look at the improvement of each of these teams, I have to look at some of these award winners, Andrew Nicholson and his improvement over the years. C.J. Aiken has just been a terrific shot blocker from start to finish. He's even gotten better this season. And Ronald Roberts will talk a lot about him this afternoon and just how effective he's been coming off the bench for Phil Martelli. Well, the Hawks with the lead, 16-13. Fran Dunphy we saw earlier today, disappointing loss for the Temple Owls, but we all have to believe that they're a, uh, an entry to the NCAA Big Dance. Charlon Kloof from Suriname he went to the Netherlands in high school and then to the Canary Islands. How about the roster, the roster by country for St. Bonaventure? Andrew Nicholson, of course, is from Mississauga, just an hour south of Toronto. Nine players from the U.S., three from Canada. And Kloof, from Suriname, the Netherlands, and the Canary Islands. That's a world travel. You know, Tom, you, you have to be awfully creative sometimes when you're uh, trying to build a team. You're trying to get players that are good enough. And they could be from anywhere. The world's awfully small as it relates to basketball. But St. Bonaventure has always had a great pipeline to Canada, as have many of those schools in the northern part of the state of New York, like Canisius and Niagara, Syracuse as well. Mark Schmidt has said that it's tough to get kids from Canada because all the good ones, after their sophomore year, they go to the States for prep school. And that's where everybody knows about them. Here's Jones with the shot clock at five. And the rebound tipped out into the hands of Wright. Well, I used to coach at Siena College, and we weren't too far from Montreal, and really not all that far from Ontario or Toronto. And uh, we would regularly make trips there. There's some very good youth programs in, the, in Ontario. And right down toward the baseline. Aiken against Nicholson. 
Nicholson back in his way in. Nice move to get Aiken off balance, and then he lays it in. Six points. Yeah, St. Joe's again decides not to double team, and it'll be an interesting matchup. We saw Kanasevic on him earlier, this time C.J. Aiken, and I think in that situation, it's really hard for C.J. Aiken to block shots. Especially when Gallic Nicholson gets him off balance. Kanasevic uh, on the bench right now. Bonaventure has made seven straight field goals. They lead it by one. Hawks with the ball. Shot clock down to ten. Chris Wilson to Langston Galloway. Open. A few steps beyond the arc. Langston Galloway, the Atlantic 10's leader in three-point shooting percentage from Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Atlantic 10 quarterfinal basketball. Hello, with John Griffin. I'm Tom McCarthy. We already had one upset today. The number one seed, the Temple Isles, lost to the number eight seed, the UMass Minutemen. St. Bonaventure's the higher seed. They're in white. Here's Nicholson for the baseline. He has six already. Misses there. Jones with the board. Thanks to Galloway. Just hit a three. Can he do it again? Nope. He was open, too. He certainly was. Just a little bit short, but he's been such a reliable three-point shooter. You really can't give him that kind of space. Defense, their field goal percentage defense is tops in the Atlantic 10. Among the leaders in college basketball. Kluth against Jones. That was a very strong finish by Charlon Kluth. Well, he's only a sophomore, but he's a big guy. 6'3", 195 pounds, and he just took on Carl Jones going to the basket. Johnson and Quarles at the scorer's table. Johnson for St. Bonaventure, Quarles for St. Joseph's. Ron Roberts left open for a baseline jumper. We talked about Darius Quarles. Ronald Roberts is also a guy, particularly in the second half of this year, that's really stepped up his scoring. We saw him against Dayton where he had a spectacular game, but it makes a huge difference when he can come off the bench and get double figures. The defense by C.J. Aiken, Endoy with the screen and roll. Here's Roberts down low against Endoy. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw Carl Jones. Aiken, he can three. He launched a little too far in that one. Other than kind of seven, sometimes the Hawks really have difficulty scoring in the lane, so they space their guys on the perimeter, and they're very reliant on three-point shooting. Now you might think that's odd that Nicholson took that three, but that's part of his game, too, where he's expanding his zone. Wilson in the paint. Tough shot, no good. We thought maybe he'd been banged a little bit. Nicholson, foul going up. That foul go against Ron Roberts. 21-19, St. Joseph's on top. Pretty tight so far in the first 13 minutes. How about Kloof? You want to talk about strong? That's strong right there for the bodies. And then Ron Roberts, a little touch for the baseline. NCAA TV and marketing rights fees. Where does the money go? Long answer, 96% of the revenue is used to fund 88 championships and support 1,055 member colleges and universities who together provide $2 billion annually in financial aid to more than 400,000 student athletes so they can compete and learn. Short answer, we put our money where our mission is.
Back inside Boardwalk Hall, St. Bonaventure not used to coming down to Atlantic City, so they have traveled with some numbers, particularly the student section. Hello, with John Griffin. I'm Tom McCarthy. John mentioned before that he's coached at St. Joseph's. He coached at Siena. So you recruited to Canada, where Andrew Nicholson is from, and he could be one of the best players from Canada that we've seen in college basketball. I think so, and I think he made a spectacular choice in picking St. Bonaventure because he got a chance to play from his freshman year on. He wasn't able to do this when he was a rookie, but look at this assortment of moves. That's a little left-handed jump hook. Look at how, in a sense, he's kind of schooled C.J. Aiken in the low post, which is very difficult to do against the best shot blocker in America. So Andrew Nicholson, I'm just a huge fan of the progress of this guy. It says a lot that somebody can score 2,000 points in his college career, 2013, which is fifth best in St. Bonaventure history. And how about when you describe Andrew Nicholson's play in the context of Bob Lanier? You know, Bob Incredible. Lanier is kind of like God in New York. I mean, he's had such a storied history and fantastic career in the heyday of St. Bonaventure basketball and Andrew Nicholson in some respects is being compared to Bob. Well, a remarkable story. He played one year of organized basketball before he was recruited by St. Bonaventure. You know what he played? Baseball. He was a baseball player in Toronto. Must have been a heck of a presence on the mound. You know, thinking about this game, I, 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 you know, I see so many guys being recruited. Here's Nicholson going to the bench. He'll come back in probably in a, in a minute or two. But I just see the development of a guy who picks a school where he's going to play a lot. Right. And, and there's no substitute for getting in the game and learning from that experience. Tied up at 21, some three-point field goals. St. Bonaventure has attempted just one. St. Joseph's two for ten for beyond the Endoy. They think Yusu Endoy from Senegal, just a freshman. They think he is going to be a, a force defensively as his career moves on. Boy, that was an impressive block from off the ball. Kind of reminds a little bit of C.J. Aiken. You kind of see that time where the defensive abilities of the kind of uh, supersede what somebody's able to accomplish offensively. Conger had the open three, no good. The ball goes out of bounds. Well, this is what we're talking about with Endoy. Yeah, Endoy's just off the ball. He's just kind of laying in wait, and Conger does a good job of not failing. Jones here going to the basket. Jones would have wanted to fail, but you really, when you have Endoy away from the basket like that, you have to take the ball much stronger to the basket. And the Sevic back into the ball game. CJ get out of the game. And Joseph has to get somebody off the floor. Look at Carl Jones off the floor. So Aiken and Jones get a breather. All evened up at 21. The ball was knocked out of bounds by the Hawks, so it is St. Bonaventure ball with a fresh 35. He's got free throw shooting teams, two field goal percentage teams, and that'll be a blocking foul on Darius Quarles. And for the second time in this half, Kloof with some continuation. Boy, Kloof is just impressive here getting into the lane. He just kind of leaves Chris Wilson in his wake. He's under control. St. Joe's tries to take a charge there. Quarles just not there quickly enough. And I'm awfully impressed with the play of Kloof, only a sophomore. Charlotte Kloof, as we mentioned, has been all over the place. Netherlands, Suriname, the Canary Islands. He never saw St. Bonaventure when he decided on St. Bonaventure. The Bonnies have a two-point lead. Already, the number one seed, Temple, has lost to UMass 77-71. A remarkable game by Chaz Williams and Jesse Morgan. The game's coming up with Sal at St. Louis, against St. Louis, excuse me, at 6.30 Eastern. And in Dayton Xavier, it's the third time these two teams will face each other this year, and they've split the other two. And it's a foul on Kluth, or excuse me, on Endor. Ron Roberts went to the floor pretty hard. Yeah, he's limping there a bit, but it uh, looks like he's okay. Roberts was just trying to post up, and uh, Endoy took his legs out from underneath of him. Endoy became a platform for him. And he's trying to double team inside. He's in a little bit of trouble. He finds Chris Wilson. House neck in the ball game for the first time. He's an Olean native. He's Olean High School. For St. Bonaventure is located in Olean. Here's Quarles for three. Good. Well, deep shot.
shot from the corner. Kanasevic got double teamed in the low post. St. Joe's does a good job of rotating the ball around the perimeter. We think Charles has become common, and now Hausnacht is called for the personal foul. They say he's become calmer, but yet more aggressive offensively. Yeah, I think that's the case. Here's penetration by Roberts. He does a good job of spotting up Daryl Quarles that time. Quarles has seven first half points. Quarles is not a double figure scorer. He's only averaging about five points a game, but this is a good start for him. Seven points already in this game. 24-23, you see Carl Jones at the scorer's table. He'll check in in a moment. Nice look by Kanis Seven from the foul as Ron Roberts is going up and he'll go to the free throw line. Demetrius Conger is called for the foul. That's his first. And it's the 16th foul. A pretty clean half right now, foul-wise. St. Bonaventure with six, St. Joseph's with four. Yeah, I think it's a pretty well-played game, pretty much what we expected. And Roberts is at the foul line. I'm going to, again, sometimes, Tom, I always focus on the pass that leads to the score. And I have to give uh, credit to Kenesevic there. That time he made the pass from the top of the key to find Ronald Roberts, who had a pretty easy opportunity to score. Roberts has improved from the free throw line, although he missed his first one. He does get the roll on the second one. As we expected, this is a tightly contested game. We've had seven lead changes so far in this ballgame. Nicholson down low against Roberts. Roberts tried to stand his ground, and he did, but the offensive board by St. Bonaventure. They had 20 offensive rebounds the last time these two teams faced each other. Yusu Endoy with his left hand. Well, I give him a lot of credit for that. He did a good job of keeping the ball alive, and then he realized Carl Jones was guarding him, and he demanded the basketball. Spin move by Carl Jones. Ron Roberts a little too long. It's a jump ball, and the possession remains with St. Joseph. That's usually a good play for St. Joseph. Just throw the ball up near the rim, and Ronald Roberts will go and get it. A little missed timing, not a bad pass. But I'm not necessarily sure that uh, Carl Jones and Ronald Roberts were in sync. C.J. Aiken will use this moment to check into the game for Ron Roberts. Ron Roberts, Phil Martelli had one, I thought, one of the more endearing quotes about Ron Roberts. He's really a starter. Some guys would pout, but that's not the way he was raised. He's really a special young man, and I'm delighted he's having success because he's such a good person. Well, and you and I were talking about St. George's team being so young, and everybody back would he also right. be a guy coming off the bench next year yeah we'll see he's been effective that way here's galloway his runner and no good rebound though for st joseph's quarrels for three again Dang! 10 points for darius quarrels now that's a surprise well yeah it is and sometimes it's those guys you know, you don't expect that you really don't focus on in the scouting report to make a difference in the game. Quarles is a guy that had a career high of 17 versus Norfolk State, but, you know, for the most part, this is a guy that only averages five points a game. Moves from the free throw line. Yusu Endoy with the offensive rebound. And another one for Nicholson. Tom, he left no room for C.J. Aiken to have anything to say about that shot. C.J. Aiken was right there, but there was no space between the ball and the rim for C.J. Aiken to block that shot. 28-27 the score. Aiken the hand off to Jones. Jones St. Joseph's ball with 15 on the shot clock when we return. That guy has played a heck of a ball game so far, Yusu Endoy, but the Hawks have gotten 10 points from Darius Quarles. You didn't expect that, but what you did expect is Andrew Nicholson. How about that jam? Here's Endoy to finish off before we go to break. Choose.org are working together to put academic and athletic supplies back into our schools. 
then you can join the NCAA in supporting the needs of teachers' projects. From athletics to academics, find out how you can help future student athletes at NCAA.org slash fund the future. So Stephen got his report card today. Whatever. Unexpected pleasures are the best part of life. Why not drive one every day? Introducing the all-new Verano. It's unexpected and unprecedented luxury for a car this size. Nice. The all-new Verano from Buick. Division I student athletes have higher SAT and ACT scores than college-bound students. The number of us receiving diplomas is at an all-time high. African-American males who are student athletes are 10% more likely to graduate. Still think we're just a bunch of dumb jocks? You need to do your homework. There are over 400,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. Well, St. Joseph's leads it by one, 28-27, 2.55 to play here in the first half. Coming up at halftime, Adam Zucker will be at our New York studios, plus a feature on Phil Martelli. And that guy right there, UMass head coach Derek Kellogg, is feeling pretty good about himself and his team. He will join us at the half. UMass upset the number one seed, Temple. Atlantic 10 is seventh in RPI among conferences. The UMass win over Temple could mean that an extra team goes to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I think that's the plus. Now, obviously, uh, Temple will not get as high a seat as they were hoping for, but it does open the door for an extra team from the league. And, you know, teams had such a good year. The concern I have is that the, team, the league has kind of beaten up on itself over the course of right. the year. And, uh, you know, with all those teams kind of uh, jumbled together in the middle of the pack, you, you wonder sometimes if... Uh, you know, somebody doesn't have enough wins, just an absolute number of enough wins. Now Carl Jones with the shot clock down to three, able to lay it in and give the Hawks a three-point lead. He has five points. Both teams shooting well. They bought him a trick, 55 percent, but they haven't made a three yet. Nicholson, how about that athletic move? He thought he was fouled. Either way, he has 12 first-half points. 12 of the 16 points in the paint for St. Bonaventure. Well, it'll be interesting to see if St. Joseph's makes an adjustment there on Nicholson in terms of who they match up on, whether it's C.J. Aiken or Kenesevic, and whether or not they double-team him in the low post. I don't know about you, but I think that Kenesevic's had more success against him. Yeah, I think he's just a bigger body, and he can kind of push him backward just a little bit, not let him position himself so close to the basket and feel comfortable when he catches the ball. Shot clock under 10. Ron Roberts over the top of the defense. Can't get it to go. The put back by Galloway, no good. Endoy with another rebound. Endoy now with five rebounds in this first half. He has five. Nicholson has four. St. Bonaventure should take the lead. We've had nine lead changes. Here's Nicholson for three. No good. Off the top of the backboard. It's still alive. Endoy with the offensive rebound. Did that ball hit the shot clock? No, I don't think it hit the shot clock. You know, the top of the backboard still in play. It bounced, it seemed to me, along the top edge of that backboard. When we talk about guys you don't expect to make a difference, Endoy is another one of those guys in addition to that is well. Here's Nicholson leading the great counter. Well, this is the 10th lead change of the day. St. Bonaventure up by three. Phil Bartelli with that scowl on his face, not happy about the fact that the three attempt by Nicholson to hit the, t hit the top of the backboard. Watch this. Hits the rim, top of the backboard. Boop, boop, boop. And it's still in play. He thought it was out of play. Well, four bounces along the top of the backboard. And I think as a player, you just got to play the whistle. I mean, stop fighting. I can't really the Well, in game number one, we saw one run after another. Game number two, we've seen 11 different lead changes. St. Bonaventure, 14 two-point field goals. They've yet to hit a three. Well, you know, that's a good sign. They can score around the basket, and, they, you know, they're not necessarily getting second shots, so I think St. Joe's is doing a good job there. But Phil Martelli has to be concerned about the number of baskets that St. Bonaventure has in the low post. One minute, five seconds to play here in the first half. 
Boy, we've been really lucky today. These first two games have been outstanding. Four ties, ten lead changes. The largest lead is five by St. Joseph's in this first half. Well, we kind of expected it, didn't we? Uh, given we the did. fact that these two teams had matched up just nine days ago, ended in double overtime in the earlier game we had today between Temple and UMass. The predecessor of that game was an overtime game, and we had a terrific, terrific battle here in Atlantic City. How about Endoy now with seven rebounds? Time winding down here in the first half. Ivanovic with a three-point lead. They have time. Shot clock is still at 12. Here's Nicholson against C.J. Aiken. He's probably just going to take it himself. He loses control for a moment, spinning around. Good help by Roberts. Kind of like LaVoy Allen at Temple. He just took that ball after palming it and trying to get it to the cylinder. Ennoy with the save. Shot clock is off. Eight seconds to play. Here's Kluth. Off balance. Shot doesn't get it to go. Loose ball. Gathers. How about that last 15 seconds of the first half? Well, Bonnie's got second and third shots. Endoy did a remarkable job. He's had a terrific first half. What a combination in the front court between Nicholson and Endoy. These are two very good big men. Endoy has a tremendous amount of upside. The two of those guys combined for 13 rebounds in the first half this afternoon. Game two here in Atlantic City, just as good as game number one. St. Bonaventure on top, 33 to 30. We are. Team Chevy, located in Olean, New York, is your Chevy car, truck, or SUV headquarters. Team Chevy takes great pride in providing our customers with quality American-made vehicles. Team Chevy is not your everyday Chevy dealer. We understand that you, the customer, is our top priority, and that's why our highly motivated sales staff goes the extra mile to ensure that all your questions and needs are met. If you're in the market for a quality vehicle, stop on down and view the all-new American-made Chevy line of vehicles. Team Chevy, your car and truck headquarters. When you need tires, think Schultz. You have a lot riding on your tires, so come to the experts at Schultz. Free mounting and balancing, free tire rotations, and buy with confidence that we have the lowest prices on tires in the area. We carry all your trusted brands like Firestone, BF Goodrich, Michelin, Goodyear, and many more. When you need tires, think Schultz. 11 locations to serve you. Schultz, best selection, best price guaranteed. Loyalty has its rewards at Edmund GM Supercenter. You want it, we got it at Edmund and Bradford. Great selection and great prices. Save over 8,000 on the Chevy Silverado and over 6,000 on the Buick Enclave. GMC Yukon with Edmund discount, over $9,000 off. GMC Sierra, over $8,000 off. Only at Edmund GM Supercenter, Route 219, Fosterbrook exit in Bradford. Nobody beats a Schultz deal. Hurt in a car, call William Attar. Fighting the insurance company after a serious accident can be difficult. Complex paperwork and strict deadlines can turn a bad dream into a nightmare. Choose a lawyer with a proven record of success. At William Attar, we know how to fight the big insurance companies. We've helped thousands of car accident victims get the money they deserve. Hurt in a car, call William Attar. 444-4444. Helping people, it's what we do. you from New York at the half between St. Joseph's and St. Bonaventure. Hawks coach Phil Martelli is one of the most colorful personalities in the college coaching ranks and earlier this season CBS Sports Network followed him for the day as his team prepared to take on Boston University. I'm proud to say that I'm, that I'm a Philadelphian through and through. I think the Philadelphians are loyal. I think they're hardworking. And I like to think that that's exactly what I am. And I also believe that in Philadelphia, you earn your respect and you're not just given respect.
And that's always been big with me. I don't want somebody to, to appreciate me because I'm the coach. I want them to appreciate for my efforts and what I've been able to accomplish. With the program, I, I don't consider it a job. I consider it a passion. I believe that it has to be individualistic, that each of these players has to be driven to daily improvement. And if we can take each day and maximize that day, that's what I've always believed in, in this program, to maximize the day. At the end of today, before we put our head on the pillow, let's be able to say, you know what, we got better. So they cross the court, enter the ball, and then they run that screen to screener action on a dribble over. Is that, it's a dribble over or a handoff? We didn't get enough. We didn't see as much zone as, as I would have anticipated, but this game I think we will. Basically how it works in my office is if you email me and it doesn't come on my personal, on my, on my iPhone, then my secretary prints them out, I read them, I handwrite my response, I hand it back to her and she responds. It's not that fast, I know that. But I think the computer's a fad. It'll probably go away. So I'm, I'm going to take my time in learning how to uh, use it. He is just full speed ahead. It's jumper last, layup first. Come on, push through perfection. He's more of an in-your-face coach, uh, letting you know what to do and then uh, making sure you get it right the next time. And, and if you don't get it right, then he tell you again to make sure you got it right. As soon as Pop got the ball, the look on your face was fear, right? To see it serve, serve. That's their two best players coming together. That's a double. Go! Go! My ultimate goal in practice is for the players that never, ever wonder what time of the day it is. Stay up, Tay. Stay up, Tay. Work yourself. It's your shot. Two trips. Oh, oh, oh. I want practice to move, to snap, and I want to be able to walk out tonight and say, you know what? I got a little bit better. There you go. All right, on offense, pace. Full and half for a pace. Full and half for a pace. Play till your tongue's out. Come out. We'll get you back. I worry an awful lot on game day, not on whether or not we're going to win or lose. Uh, I worry about have I properly prepared my team for the challenge that they're about to face. I'm the teacher. Get your rest. 7.45 tomorrow. Let's get it in. Clean up after yourselves. There's no teacher that wants to put a test in front of a kid and say, man, I sure hope they don't do well. Until the ball goes in the air. Once the ball's in the air, then I then I can then I'm at peace. Come on, let's call it. Together on three. One, two, three. Together. Once the game starts, he's at peace, but don't try emailing Phil Martelli. We, we don't have official statistics on this, but Coach Martelli has to be the only Division I coach, maybe any division coach, with no computer on his desk. And St. Joe's went on to beat Boston University the next day there, 75-68. to 68. That's all for now. From here in New York, I'm Adam Zucker. The second half is on the way from Atlantic City. To crash the boards. The Atlantic 10 Men's Basketball Championship heads into Atlantic City for another three-day weekend of college hoops action. Don't miss the excitement at Boardwalk Hall March 9th, 10th, and 11th. What a weekend. Single session tickets start at just $26, and family four-packs are $79 purchased in advance. A10 tickets are on sale now at the box office or through Ticketmaster. For information, visit AtlanticCityNJ.com. This is where we sharpen our minds. This is where we compete as one. This is where we share our stories. This is where we share knowledge with each other. This is our home. St. Bonaventure University, where becoming extraordinary is tradition. For me to represent St. Joe's is representing something that I love. When we signed up to be a Hawk, we expect to be a Hawk for the rest of our lives. Growing up, I just wanted to be a Hawk and to think that I've actually done it. It's been the best four years of my life. When I go out there and I have the Hawk on my chest, it makes me so proud to go out there and play for my university. 
to be a hawk is to be a part of this great community and this great reputation that St. Joe's has. People are so proud to come from St. Joe's. It's great to be a part of such a great tradition of academic success as well as athletic success. To be able to represent the university is something very special. It stands for something more. To be a hawk means that you have great perseverance. Giving it my all at everything I do with school work, on the court with basketball. Here at St. Joseph's, we're here to develop everyday champions. I planned on being a Hawk the rest of my life. From here on out, like this is my family, and I love every second of it. Back inside Boardwalk Hall, this is game two this afternoon, two of four. St. Bonaventure on top of St. Joseph's by three. We are at halftime. Well, the winning coach in game number one is Derek Kellogg. They upset the number one seed, the Temple Owls. First of all, Derek, uh, congratulations. I mean, the second half was outstanding for you guys. Well, I appreciate that. That was a, a big-time half for us. I thought the kids came out in the second half and really competed at a high level and uh, shared the basketball, and it was nice to knock down a couple threes there. <laughs> Well, you got a lead of about 10 points, and then it looked like uh, Tempo made a run, and I thought you guys kept your composure and were able to, to battle back. Well, with such young guys, uh, for them to come back after Temple made that, that comeback uh, there in the second half after we went up 10, we knew it was going to happen, but for it to happen as fast as it did, it was good to see uh, Chaz settle the team down and uh, really get us back running on all cylinders. All right, speaking of Chaz Williams, uh, I mean, he was outstanding in that, in that second half. He was outstanding the whole game. In the second half, he really took the team on his shoulders. Yeah, and I think he's really learned learning how to close games out and, and be a point guard, not just a score. And uh, he did a very nice job there coming down the stretch of making free throws and getting us into offense. And um, he's a guy that I really like having on our team. Did you say anything to him after he was scoreless the first 13 minutes? I thought he was trying to pick spots uh, there in the uh, first half. And I told him, be more aggressive, really try to take the game over some and, um, you know, come out and give our team the boost that we really need. He finished the game with 10 assists. That's really kind of hard to teach somebody, and you, you were a terrific point guard in your career, but 10 <laughs> assists is a lot for a point guard, what you say? Yeah, absolutely, and especially for a kid like Chaz who can score the ball the way he can. To have him uh, score 20, have 10 assists, limited turnovers, I think he played a, a pretty good game, and uh, I'm hoping he has a little more in the tank tomorrow. Well, you talked about the three-point shooting. It certainly helped. I thought Jesse Morgan was the X factor for you in that ball game. Yeah, Jesse did a great job. Uh, when he gets his confidence going and knocks them threes down, He's a guy that uh, is a streaky player. He's one that can really put points together. And uh, What I really liked about him was his defense today. I thought he locked up and did a good job on Moore, except for that one run he went on. All right, real quick, what do you think of the first half of this one so well, far? These teams are playing. Uh, Nicholson's a beast down low, and uh, the way St. Joe's gets up and down. Uh, this is a great college game uh, in an unbelievable atmosphere. I'm happy for the A-10 and uh, the conference of how this is all playing out. All right, you will face the winner tomorrow afternoon. Congratulations, Derek, on uh, the win over the Temple Owls. Second half between St. Joseph's and St. Bonaventure. Is coming up right after this. When you need tires, think Schultz. You have a lot riding on your tires, so come to the experts at Schultz. Free mounting and balancing, free tire rotations, and buy with confidence that we have the lowest prices on tires in the area. We carry all your trusted brands like Firestone, BF Goodrich, Michelin, Goodyear, and many more. When you need tires, think Schultz. 11 locations to serve you. Schultz, best selection, best price guaranteed. You've been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Turn to Roswell Park for the answers. My area of expertise is prostate cancer. That's what I do day in and day out. That's what I've been doing for the last two decades. So it's very important to be properly educated and counseled so that the choice you make first is your best choice. Our job here as a cancer center is to educate patients as to options that exist for them. Turn to the experts at Roswell on Channel 1281. The only thing better than getting what you want is getting more. Hi, Tom Torbjornsson here for Schultz Lincoln in Jamestown. Get the most attractive offers in four years complimentary maintenance on a Lincoln MKZ that has all the luxury at no extra cost. Like intuitive sink technology, leather seating, and real wood trim. Heated and cooled front seats, all standard. Drive yours for $3.99 a month with zero down. Only at your Lincoln dealer, Schultz Lincoln in Jamestown. Smart thinking academic success as well as athletic success. To be able to represent the university is something very special. It stands for something more. To be a Hawk means that you have great perseverance. Giving it my all at everything I do with school work, on the court with basketball. Here at St. Joseph's, we're here to develop everyday champions. 
I planned on being a hawk the rest of my life. From here on out, like, this is my family, and I love every second of it. We get set for the second half, the second game of our Atlantic 10 quarterfinals. St. Padovich has a three-point lead. One number that really stood out in the first half, St. Joseph's turned it over only one time. I know, it's really hard to beat a team that only turns the ball over once. So if I'm St. Bonaventure, I want to find a way to force St. Joseph's to make more mistakes. All right, let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. And some surprise guys sort of stepped up in the first half, including Darius Quarles for St. Joseph's. What a terrific first half Darius Quarles had. He shot four for five from the field. He made two threes. He finished the first half with 10 points. So that's a bit of surprise. On the other end of the court, however, Andrew Nicholson is not a surprise. St. Bonaventure went to him often. He took 12 first-half shots. He has 12 first-half points in a variety of moves. He really dazzled me, I think, in the first half with his assortment of low-post moves. You see the stats from the first half. St. Bonaventure did not make a three-pointer. Will they heat up, or is that just a product of Andrew Nicholson? Well, they only took three, but look at the success they've had in the paint. 24 first-half points. So in spite of the fact that St. Joseph's doing a decent job on the offensive playoffs, they're not defending well in the lane. All right, let's take a look at John Griffin's goodie bag of questions. John, who are the four number one seeds? Boy, again, I'm going out on a limb here, okay? Kentucky, Kansas, Syracuse, <laughs> and Duke, okay? They're ranked number one, two, three, and four, something like that. All right, most dangerous team? Well, most dangerous team, I tend to skew my think thinking towards coaches, and I, I'm a fan of John Beeline, so I, I think Michigan could be that team. This may change, but how many A-10 teams will be dancing? Well, I said three, Temple, St. Louis, and a question mark. So the, I, I think Temple's in, I think St. Louis in. It'll be interesting. Maybe it's even two question marks. There could be possibly four with the upset of Temple early this afternoon. All right, St. Bonaventure with the ball to begin the second half. Daquan Cook, Demetrius Conger, Conger left alone, but Langston Galloway came over with the block shot. Boy, Gathered. Conger, Tom, I'm sorry, had a fantastic opportunity. Why not open. Open. Yeah. It's almost as if Galloway was waiting, 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 and then attacks. Carl Jones needs to get a rhythm going scoring-wise. Jones, two for eight in the first half. He has just five points. On the flip side of it, if I'm Phil Martelli, and I go into the locker room down three with my leading scorers not really you know, surfacing right now, and, and the leading scorer being Darius Quarles, I have to feel pretty good about the opportunities to get enough points in the second half. Carl Jones, 20 points or more in each of the last three games. He said he has just five in this ball game. Nicholson down low, covered by Kanasevic. Backs his way in, shoulders his way in, forcing his way in over the top of Kanasevic and the long arm of C.J. Aiken. Well, that's just a guy that's just absolutely different in talent from a lot of other people. Yeah, because Kenneth Sevick, I thought, did a pretty good job of holding his ground, not letting Nicholson get closer to the basket. And you got C.J. Aiken on the weak side ready to block a shot, and Nicholson was still able to score. Hawks with five wins when they trail at the half this year. They're going to need to pick up number six. Kenneth Sevick covered by Nicholson. He'll try to return the favor. Nicholson blocks it. Ball knocked out of bounds. It will be St. Joseph's ball with nine on the shot clock. Well, Nicholson just continues to impress me, especially his play around the basket. He just kind of reads the defense, a little up and under, and he leaves the ball kind of out of his hand high enough so that C.J. Aiken is not able to block it. Just kept his pivot foot. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an awful lot of athleticism. Shot clock at two. Jones lets it go, and the net barely moves. Seven points for Carl Jones. Very off-balance shot, but he had to take it. And he got a glimpse of what his ability to, to just put points on the board is with a shot like that. But on the other end of the court, he's got to play better defense. Carl Kluf has really, again, impressed me with his ability to get into the lane, get past his man. Jones again. Five straight points. And he 
it makes this a two-point game. A little shootout here between Kloof and Jones. Carl Jones came into this ball game with more than 1,300 career points. Foul is called. It's going to be an offensive foul. Darius Coral's got position. Well, here's Jones, just an off-balance shot at the end of the shot clock. A difficult shot. And this is vintage Carl Jones. He can drill the three, and this is a guy that can score 17 points a game, so he needs to get on the board for Phil Martelli's team here in the second half. Uh, one of the notes that St. Bonaventure also has to be happy with is that Andrew Nicholson just picked up that foul, but it's his first of the day. Galloway for three, and it's good. Well, they can do that with the best of them in the Atlantic 10, and Galloway just gave St. Joseph's the lead. 38-37. Think we're going to have trouble finding points today in the second half? Just like in the, the first game, <laughs> time, I think the second half kind of really starts to uh, change the complexion of the game. Both teams, Temple and UMass, picked it up in the second half, and we're seeing that here between St. Bonaventure and St. Joseph's. I don't know who caught it, but it was a great shot of Mark Schmidt running up the floor, the sidelines, with his team defensively. He started at the baseline and came all the way up to the coach's box. Galloway against Gathers, whistle blows, and a foul called on Gathers. That's the first team foul. foul or shoot, the second team foul. Well, that's not what Phil Martelli likes to see. I mean, they're the leaders in the A-10 in, in field goal percentage defense. And, you know, I have to give a lot of credit to Nicholson for that. Execution in the out of bounds play for St. Joseph's. Just a miscue by St. Bonaventure. That's 12 points now. That's moving without the ball, too. St. Joseph. Or St. Bonaventure really just lost their number. Just kind of lost their focus. And that's the reason here on this play, Tom, where St. Bonaventure's field goal percentage is just so high. Moving out the ball, Darius Corbis. And here's uh, Nicholson putting on a clinic here in the low post. And it really doesn't matter at this point whether it's Kenneth Semick or C.J. Aiken. I mean, uh, Andrew Nicholson is just having his way in the low post. That's an oddity. He just missed the free throw. But well, when you look at the uh, field goal percentage of St. Bonaventure, and you say it's a bit uncharacteristic of St. Joe's defense, it's really all Andrew Nicholson. That's true. He's getting all these points close to the basket, and he's shooting such a high percentage. Yeah, and, and they're not taking a lot of threes. They're taking closer shots, like you said, and that's a little easier for them. Kind of said it was a strong move, but he just pulled the string. He needed to finish that one a little stronger because he got the space. 41-40, St. Bonaventure on top. Four minutes into the second half. Game two of the Atlantic 10 quarterfinals. Game one, UMass upset the number one seed, Temple. Nicholson lost the ball. He may have gotten away with a travel, too. He thought he was back. Jones to the basket. Scoop shot is good. 12 points, seven in this half. Well, he's starting to assert himself. He's been off, I think, careful about driving to the basket or over penetrating. That time, he just gets past this man and does a terrific job of finishing. I don't know how Conger didn't hurt his ankle on that. He was able to get some separation with a, a nifty spin move. 16th lead change of the game. 16. Now, would you just uh, describe this as great offense or poor defense? I, I actually think it's terrific offense. I do, too. I think it's individual skill for the most part. I mean, there's teamwork, but there's a lot of individual skill. Dennis Sevick was open for three, decided not to take it. Shot clock at 10. Galloway from 16. Too much. Nicholson now with seven rebounds. The goal now with 16 points. Jordan gathers for three, no good. Dequan Cook, that position, shot back by Aiken, and Kata Sebek with the rebound. Well, there's a battle on the weak side on that rebound by Cook. They're gonna call a blocking foul on Charlon Kluf. Kluf just did not get position. 
St. Bonaventure on top by one. We've had 16 different lead changes. Here's number 16, Conger, with a beautiful move to get some space in the bucket. When you need tires, think Schultz. You have a lot riding on your tires, so come to the experts at Schultz. Free mounting and balancing, free tire rotations, and buy with confidence that we have the lowest prices on tires in the area. We carry all your trusted brands like Firestone, BF Goodrich, Michelin, Goodyear, and many more. When you need tires, think Schultz. 11 locations to serve you. Schultz, best selection, best price guaranteed injured in a car accident? Before you hire a lawyer, ask how many of their clients got million dollar results. As one of the nation's largest personal injury firms, Salino and Barnes has helped thousands of car accident victims. If you've been injured, call Salino and Barnes and let us work to get you the best result possible. And again this year, Salino and Barnes was named to the U.S. News and World Report list as a first tier best lawyers, best law firms for personal injury litigation. Car accident? The choice is easy. Salino and Barnes. At JVC, students come first. My classes are just the right size. Everyone can participate. My dean helps me keep on track so I can graduate on time. The financial aid office really helped me make the right choices. JVC offers associate and bachelor degree programs, flexible schedules, scholarships, financial aid, and career placement. My schedule fits my life. I'll complete my bachelor degree in just over three years. Schedule your career planning session today. Find us online or on Facebook. three-point shooting for St. Bonaventure. They have 34 points in the paint. 34 of their 43. They're on top of St. Joseph's right now. The winner of this game will face the the UMass the upset-minded UMass Minutemen. They defeated number one Temple in game one of the Atlantic 10 quarterfinals. Neither team led by more than six points in St. Bonaventure's double overtime victory back on the 29th of February. Well, when I talked to Mark Schmidt before the game, I mean, he expected to have another battle just like they had at the Riley Center not too long ago, and he thought it was going to come down to a lot of the fundamentals, you know, making shots, playing good defense, not turning the basketball over, and we're having kind of a back-and-forth game here this afternoon, very much like these guys have come to expect in the Riley Center only nine days ago. Katasevic for three, third of the day, no good. Roberts tipped it into the hands of Endoy. Endoy. Give him another rebound. That's going to be number nine this afternoon. Terrific afternoon for Endoy. You know, he hasn't gotten a lot of minutes here in the second half, but I think he was a factor in the first half. Sure was. And I'll be curious to see if he can do the same thing with 15 or 14 minutes remaining. You know, the other reason he was a factor is Wright is able to kiss that off the glass is because Daquan Cook was in foul trouble, so they needed somebody to step up. So he's part of the five on the floor right now for St. Bonaventure that you just saw. Three-point lead for the Bodies. Donald Roberts in the ball game for St. Joseph's. Setting the screen, freeing Jones. Foul going up. Endoy called for the foul. And Jones will go to the free throw line. Fourth team foul. Now, free throw shooting is important, obviously. Both teams are in the 70s, 70% 70 or better. Jones, as good as he's been this year, 81%. I think a lot of people would be surprised if I told you, if I told them that he's, his numbers are down compared to last year. Well, I mean, I've seen him over the years, as you know, Tom, and uh, you know, he's been terrific as a foul shooter. I mean, I, I think he has a beautiful stroke. Everything fundamentally seems you know, solid to me. Well, he just missed that first. He has 12 points in the game, seven in this half. I think if it does come down to foul shooting, though, uh, St. Bonaventure is just marginally better. They're, they're about a 76% foul shooting. Yeah, I think that's partly because of Nicholson, because he's 76% as a big man. Eric Mosley in the ball game for the first time. He was playing very well a few weeks ago, but this is his first action of the day. Nicholson down low against Panasonic. Back in his way in. Helped out by Chris Wright. Whistle blows, and the foul, I believe, will be called against Panasevic. Oh, 
Nicholson is trying to really demand the basketball. Great battle there in the low post with Kenesevic. And you can see that Kenesevic really wants Nicholson to catch the ball 10 feet from the basket, not five feet. So then Nicholson, if he has to catch and turn, he's going to just have a jump shot instead of a layup. Well, that's his third foul, so he'll take a seat. It's the first 35 for St. Bonaventure. The ball knocked out of bounds by Ronald Roberts. I believe Gary Prager and John Hughes. We're talking about the shot clock, whether the shot clock should trick one or two seconds off. At least I think that. I, I'm, I'm deducing here. John Hughes is going to come over to the scorer's table. You know, we're right on the court, but, you know, we're about 50 feet yeah, from right, where the right. play is uh, taking place, so we're sometimes left to guess. Ah, there you go. They took a second off the shot there you clock. Go. Got to have a feel, John. You certainly do there, pal. Ramosa <laughs> inbound. The flex inbound. Inside to Nicholson. Read nicely by Wilson. He anticipated. Nine turnovers from St. Bonaventure. Here's Carl Jones. Galloway was open. Pass was a little long. Here's Roberts. Nicholson. Roberts thought there was a foul. Nicholson. Oh, he just stood his ground. You know what? There's only one guy in the league that could block one of the Rockets and that, that shot or that dunk. Andrew Nicholson. And Mosley with a bucket, his first points of the day. Well, if there's a bit of weakness, I think, in St. Joseph's defense here this afternoon, it's their it's the ability to defend the drive. Mosley got to the basket. Kuntz has gotten to the basket a couple times. So has Condor. For three, no good. Rebound loose. Lincoln had it, lost it out of bounds. So St. Bonaventure with a four-point lead. It started with this. That was a clean block. Yeah, that looked awfully clean to me. And there's another look at it. Well, Nicholson's going to take a breather. How important is this to capitalize on a Nicholson going out? Yeah, if you're St. Joe's, you have a chance perhaps to score in the lane. It'll be interesting to see defensively if Endoy can hold, can hold the fort while Nicholson's on the sideline. Mark Schmidt, he, he's a show all by himself on the sidelines if you get a chance to watch him. Here's Daquan Cook. Got some space against C.J. Aiken. Aiken needs to be stronger than that. It's a six-point lead. It's the largest lead of the day for St. Bonaventure. 49-43. 11.55 and counting the play here in the second half. The winner to face UMass. St. Joseph's largest lead was five. St. Bonaventure has its largest lead right now. Ooh, what a move by Jones, and he's fouled going up. He'll get two free throws when we return. Mosley called for the foul. St. Joseph's needs these buckets down by six here in the second half. Team Chevy, located in Olean, New York, is your Chevy car, truck, or SUV headquarters. Team Chevy takes great pride in providing our customers with quality American-made vehicles. Team Chevy is not your everyday Chevy dealer. We understand that you, the customer, is our top priority, and that's why our highly motivated sales staff goes the extra mile to ensure that all your questions and needs are met. If you're in the market for a quality vehicle, stop on down and view the all-new American-made Chevy line of vehicles. Team Chevy, your car and truck headquarters. When you need tires, think Schultz. You have a lot riding on your tires, so come to the experts at Schultz. Free mounting and balancing, free tire rotations, and buy with confidence that we have the lowest prices on tires in the area. We carry all your trusted brands like Firestone, BF Goodrich, Michelin, Goodyear, and many more. When you need tires, think Schultz. 11 locations to serve you. Schultz, best selection, best price guaranteed. Welcome to our new Serta mattress department at Bessaker and Koss. Countless comfort selections to choose from, like the new Serta Eye Comfort, with advanced microfoam and gel cooling technology to keep you comfortable all night long. Queen mattresses from $3.99. Free delivery and removal of your old mattress. Save on appliances. Save on TVs. 
And now, save on mattresses at Bessaker & Coffs in Olean, where we built our business on service. Well, certainly entertaining, not so much for the Hawk, as the Hawks are down by 649-43. You know, in the open, we talked about diversity for St. Joseph's. Uh, they really haven't had diversity today, scoring-wise. Well, yeah, time and balance. And Ronald Roberts, who's normally getting 11 points a game, he only has five. C.J. Aiken is a double-figure scorer. He only has two. Carl Joseph stepped it up of late, but Langston Galloway has to get into the act. Darius Quarles really had a huge impact in the first half. He's been quiet in the second half as well. All right, well, the other part of the Open was about Andrew Nicholson, and he has not, he has not slowed down in this game. Well, he's uh, performing as advertised. This is a guy who's really done it at both ends of the court. He had 16 points, seven rebounds, three block shots, and he's been the go-to guy in the low post. And when you look at this, and, and, and right now, for the moment, a well-deserved rest, but with a little over 11 minutes to go, St. Bonaventure has the lead because of that guy. Carl Jones has missed two of his last free throws. He has 13 points. John Hughes just said something to the big men underneath. I think uh, Carl Jones' game has evolved over the years. I mean, last year I thought he took a lot of bad shots. This year, I think he's doing a much better job with shot selection. He's letting the game come to him, and I think he's a much more effective player. Daquan Cook saved that. He didn't need to throw it back into the backboard, and there's a blocking foul called on Chris Wilson. Wilson had the near steal. And Eric Mosley, Phil Martelli says, threw his arm out. 49-44. Battle time at almost every position. You know, Eric Mosley goes to a hard to the basket. Chris Williams, Wilson's only a freshman, but he's also a very strong guy. You know, when you look for guys trying to get second shots and foul called on CJ Aiken. A holding foul. Aiken really has to get into the mix. He only has two points today. Kevin Dequan Cook. And he's holding him again. Fortunately, he released. So now when Endoy stops up there, do you do a double dribble? Do you try to, should you go after him? Because he's not a guy that can handle the ball. Yeah, I mean, you really do want to put pressure on him because he's apt to walk or throw a bad pass. You really don't want to kind of allow him to feel comfortable that far from the basket. St. Joseph's without a field goal in the last four and a half minutes and counting. They've only turned it over twice, which is remarkable. Wilson, covered by Conger, leads it for Jones, launches for three. Two-point ball game. Oh, well, Chris Wilson's done a heck of a job on the point right now, defensively. If anything, he's making life difficult for St. Bob. Tough pass, Jones knocked it out of bounds. Well, Eric Mosley on this play just has to get a lot closer to Carl Jones. He's just too slow in reacting to that little handoff. Jones doesn't need a lot of space, but you got to really be on top of him. Between him and Langston Galloway, they're very reliable three-point shooters. And, you know, they're going to make a lot of shots, even if you're guarding them closely, but they're going to make a ton more if you give them that kind of space. 49-47 the score. Here's right for three. Left open, no good. Rebound for Galloway. And here comes Paul Jones. And he'll go to the free throw line. Now, if you're Phil Martell, you're thinking, oh, he's got to make him. Yeah, and you know what, over the years, I... That right was wide open for this three. And this is a guy, right, who's, you know, made some big shots, certainly made some big shots against St. Joseph's. So now Jones to the free throw line. He has 17 points, 12 and a half. Take it 18 and 13. Carl Jones has 13 points, including the last eight for St. Joseph's in this half. And the rest of the team has five. Well, he's looking for a shot. His teammates are looking to get him the basketball. And we've seen in the past how Carl Jones has been able to take over games. Tied at 49, Nicholson 
Back in the ball game for St. Bonaventure. Here's Cook. The extra pass right. Oh, he's open. He hesitated. Now he launches. No good. Probably shouldn't have hesitated. There's Nicholson underneath, and he's fouled. Don't count it. Matt Wright's been cool the last couple weeks. I know he made a couple big threes in the game against St. Joseph's nine yep. days ago, but you're right, Tom, he was in a slump, and uh, right now he's had his share of, of some open shots. Now, this is the effect of Nicholson coming back into the game. All of a sudden, now St. Bonaventure's getting some second shots. Nicholson, the first of two. Let me ask you, John, his chances of playing in the NBA. We've watched LaVoy Allen this year play for the Philadelphia 76ers. Can he be like a LaVoy Allen? I think so. I mean, I, I've watched the progress of LaVoy over the years, and he's certainly getting an opportunity with Doug Collins uh, at the 76ers, and I think Andrew Nicholson could, all, could do all of that. The Atlantic 10 quarterfinals from Boardwalk Hall, the sixth year the A-10 has been here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, along with John Griffin and Tom McCarthy. It's St. Bonaventure against St. Joseph's. St. Bonaventure the four seed. St. Joseph's the five seed. And we've been back and forth all day long. Daquan Cook is called for that foul. Third foul on Cook. And that should be a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for St. Joseph's and C.J. Aiken. Well, here we go. Back and forth we go. Five times. 16 lead changes. And St. Bonaventure has the largest lead at six. The Hawks' largest lead, five. And we're halfway through the second half. Run into the one and one. Good. Well, I know we said this earlier today how these games today, I think, have been so symptomatic of what we've seen all season. You and I have uh, broadcast quite a few games that have been competitive. We've had no kind of runaways, lopsided wins. And I think today's games, I think, are reflective of what we've been able to witness all season long. Yeah, CJ can foul to tie the ball game up. Nine rebounds for Andrew Nicholson. Here's right. See the free throws. The Hawks 9 of 14. St. Bonaventure 7 of 9. They need a stop against Nicholson. Double teamed by St. Joseph's that time on Nicholson when he puts the ball on the floor. Here's Ponder for 9. No good. Rebound Cook. Knocked away by Roberts. Picked up by Paul Jones. No look pass. Nice catch by Aiken. That wasn't easy. 17th lead change. No, a deflected pass actually that ends up in his hands. And this guy's so athletic that when he catches the ball that close to the basket, he can just kind of play above the rim. Yeah, St. Joseph's has played the last few moments without Khalil Kanasevic, who's on the bench. Nicholson knocks down Aiken, but then finishes. They're going to call the foul on St. Joseph's. It's not on Aiken, it's on Ron Roberts. Well, it looks like Cook has an opportunity there, but uh, St. Joe's does a good job of coming up with the ball. And Jones just kind of throws it near the rim for C.J. Aiken, but this is Nicholson at the other end. Well, a pretty strong move there by Nicholson. Phil Martelli wanted the offensive foul. And Nicholson, just in case we didn't know there was an exclamation point. Gave us the exclamation You know what? Point. He's going to touch the ball time on us every possession. If I'm Mark Schmidt, I just play through Nicholson and see what happens. They haven't made a three. They're 0 for 6 from beyond the arc today. Everything's been two-point field goals. Well, he's such a weapon. I mean, uh, you don't have to get too tricky. You just have to give him enough space in the low post and make sure you can get him the ball. He's 8 of 16 from the floor. He has 21 points, 9 rebounds. A little hesitation from Jones. Shot clock at 10. Roberts inside. Going against Nicholson. Aiken from the perimeter. No good. And Wright will win the battle for the loose ball. St. Bonaventure's done a nice job rebounding today, but they've done a nice job defending guys like Langston Galloway and C.J. Aiken. And the foul on Chris Wilson. Yeah, for sure, Tom. I think that the uh, defense on perimeter players has been good. C.J. Aiken really hasn't tried to get the ball in the low post. He's really been, you know, kind of stationed on the perimeter. Kanasevic is coming back in the game. I think St. Joe's needs him, not just for scoring and defense, but also his ability to pass the ball. So Aiken will check out. 54-52, close to the line. 
a 66% free throw shooter. He had a great first half. He's been real quiet in the second half, but now 12 points. He played 41 minutes against St. Joseph's, you know, two weeks ago, finished with 12 points. Back to a four-point lead for St. Bonaventure. Their largest lead has been six. Well, I'm awfully impressed with St. Bonaventure, Tom, and the job that Mark Smith has done, especially when you think that Marquis Simmons was not able to play and Michael Davenport got injured. I think Davenport really would have helped him. Strong stabilizer, another rebounder. Yeah, senior and, you know, leadership, all, all those kind of things. So when you think of the front court, you know, of, of a guy like Davenport and Deron Cook. Well, Langston Galloway has been quiet today, but... He gets his 10th point of the afternoon. He's three for five from beyond the arc. And it's back to a one-point game. Galloway third in college basketball with a 47% field goal percentage beyond the arc. He's trying to get it inside of Nicholson. Panasevic picked up the loose ball. There was a lot of contact there. Well, Mark Schmidt and the staff. lead changes and that one was rather impressive I vote that that's the most impressive lead change of the day right now Katasevic called for the personal foul that's his fourth he's been playing in foul trouble but the Hawks have been able to find the rim Galloway first that was a nice shot but watch this Galloway finds the way to the perimeter Jones inside to Ron Roberts and unprecedented luxury for a car this size. Nice. The all-new Verona from Buick. The NCAA and DonorsChoose.org are working together to put academic and athletic supplies back into our schools. And you can join the NCAA in supporting the needs of teachers' projects. From athletics to academics, find out how you can help future student athletes at NCAA.org slash fund the future. So far here at Boardwalk Hall, where St. Joseph's leads St. Bonaventure 57 to 56 with 7:03 to play in the second half. Let's take a look at St. Joseph's tournament resume. Kind of on the bubble right now, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say the RPI of 60. I think just a little bit uh, beyond where you would want it to be. Strength of schedule is very good. Key wins over Creighton, who was nationally ranked, and Temple nationally ranked. And they're doing it all without a senior. We talked about that. I mean, they are. One of the youngest teams in the country. And Phil Martelli has this group ready to pursue postseason even next year. Well, you know, I uh, talked to Phil a lot last year when the team had only 11 wins. And I have to say he kept his spirits up. Uh, he sees the cup half full. He knew what he kind of had in store for the following season. And he really understood how young his team was. And it really has come together. 
they took a big step forward. And you, when you look at this team and you see how many young players there are, you think there's another step left to go. The two free throws for St. Bonaventure makes this a one point lead again. 20th lead change of the day. Leeching. That's a lot of leeching. I mean, it's yeah. remarkable. Well, it sure is. And you know, uh, you know, if we want to kind of repeat what happened two weeks ago, I mean, it looked like uh, St. Bonaventure won the game, and then something crazy happened. It right. looked like St. Joe's won the game, and then something crazy happened. And you just get the feeling that's going to kind of the way this is going to play out. Well, Andrew Nicholson has been strong this afternoon. He's trying to move St. Bonaventure to the next round to take on UMass, which upset Temple in the first round. Later on, or excuse me, the second round, later on, LaSalle will take on St. Louis. That's at 630. And then Dayton and Xavier, the third time those two teams will face each other this year. Galloway to the line. He needed every bit of that rim to get that shot to fall. He has 11. Galloway's a 79% free throw shooter. Shot number two. Give the Hawks the lead. There it is. 21 lead changes. Six minutes, 40 seconds to play. Seven ties, 22 lead changes, and neither team has reached the double digits in lead. Jaquan Cook nearly turned that ball over. In fact, the St. Joseph's fans thought that was a carry, a travel, everything. Loose ball, and a foul called on Langston Galloway. Well, there was contact, but there was a loose ball there. But what I can say, Tom, is nobody in this building's happy. Right no, now. I was thinking the same thing. It doesn't matter whether you're rooting for St. Bonaventure or St. Joseph. St. Bonaventure, you know, didn't like the call. Just uh, you know, and then Phil Martelli didn't like the call. So wearing a striped uh, shirt right now in this building is the the most unpopular person. These are three good officials too. Uh, we talked about it before. Gary Kreger, we've seen all year. John Hughes, Lamar Simpson. Johnson missed the free throw. Are the Hawks up by one. Their largest lead today has been five. Can they extend their one-point lead? Here in the second half. The top seed Temple has already lost. Can the fourth seed survive? That's St. Bonaventure. Roberts was open for a moment, wanted the tough pass from Jones. Jones winding around, shot clock under 10. I don't know if Wilson realizes the shot clock's at four. He didn't realize it. Here comes Kluth into the open floor. That was a freshman making a freshman mistake. Yeah, and you know what? I have to give Kluth a lot of credit. He played great defense on Kyle Jones throughout that possession. And then I think right now, Kluth. And number 24, Matthew White are doing a pretty good job on Galloway and Jones. It's only the third turnover of the game for St. Joseph's. Did they turn the ball over last time against St. Bonaventure? I think eight, eight times. times. 20 assists, eight turnovers. And Katasevic. Foul underneath. Well, this is Wilson in trouble. And then the steal by Kloop. And here he comes. Oh, an impressive display here by the 6'3 sophomore at both ends of the court. Good defense. And it wasn't just on that steal, you know. It was really the entire possession. Yeah, he deserved the chance to finish that play. Now Kanasevic held to uh, four points to go on four rebounds and four assists. The front end of the one and one. And it's good, so he'll get a second shot. This guy's a stat stuffer. I mean, he, he, over the course of a game, can put up some big numbers in a variety of places. He can score, he rebounds, he passes the basketball. And there's a lot of things he does that doesn't show up in a stat sheet. I'm not actually surprised that he's cross shooting percentage isn't a lot better than it is. Yeah, he's at 54% coming in. Well, you would think he's better because he's you know, probably played inside most of his career. Particularly in high school, probably at Hofstra. Here's Kluth with the jumper from the side. No good. They're still without a three-pointer, but they certainly can grab the offensive boards. Mark Schmidt wants the timeout. 5.02 to play here in the second half for a chance to move on to play UMass in tomorrow's semifinal at St. Joseph's in St. Bonaventure. NCAA TV and marketing rights fees. 
Where does the money go? Long answer, 96% of the revenue is used to fund 88 championships and support 1,055 member colleges and universities who together provide $2 billion annually in financial aid to more than 400,000 student athletes so they can compete and learn. Short answer, we put our money where our mission is. Are you ready to crash the boards? The Atlantic 10 Men's Basketball Championship heads into Atlantic City for another three-day weekend of college hoops action. Don't miss the excitement at Boardwalk Hall March 9th, 10th, and 11th. What a weekend. Single session tickets start at just $26. And family four-packs are $79 purchased in advance. A10 tickets are on sale now at the box office or through Ticketmaster. For information, visit AtlanticCityNJ.com. Division I student athletes have higher SAT and ACT scores than college-bound students. The number of us receiving diplomas is at an all-time high. African-American males who are student athletes are 10% more likely to graduate. Still think we're just a bunch of dumb jocks? You need to do your homework. There are over 400,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. Well, back inside Boardwalk Hall, St. Joseph's on top by 161 to 60. The Atlantic 10 will move from uh, Atlantic City to uh, Brooklyn next year. Boardwalk Hall has been a great site the last six seasons. How about this building? It opened in 1926. It contains the world's largest pipe organ. So, John, after this is done, you can go, uh, go put a tune together. It's hosted the Miss America pageant from 21 to 1921 to 2004. The 64 Democratic National Convention and plus the Tyson Sphinx fight back in 1981. Well, I have to say, Tom, the, the six Atlantic 10 tournaments kind of strike me, and you can see where the Atlantic 10 has hosted this tournament over the years at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, the Boardwalk Hall and Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, and we'll be moving to Brooklyn, New York next year in the Barclays Center. Yeah, the Barclays Center will be the home of the, uh, the I guess they'll be called the New York Nets instead of the New Jersey Nets beginning next year. Maybe the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, the Brooklyn Nets, that's what they'll be called. Joseph's on top by one, 61-60. St. Bonaventure, 42, turns to the paint, make it 44. They have not converted a three this afternoon because they've been relying on the shoulders of Andrew Nicholson, those 23 points. Well, that was interesting where they positioned Nicholson that time, to, you know, right at the foul line and taking Kenesevic one-on-one. Carl Jones lost along the baseline. That was not a good drive. Well, if you're St. Bonaventure, just keep going to Nicholson until somebody can prove that you know, they I can agree. stop him. There's, you don't have to get real tricky here. But the Atlantic 10 defensive player of the year hasn't been able to stop him. Nor has Halil Kanasevic. And now inside, Galloway gives up that layup. It's a three-point St. Bonaventure lead and a timeout called by Phil Martelli. Well, that's a good decision on Phil's part to make the timeout. And Mark Schmidt, I think, has done a terrific job. Here's Nicholson positioning himself at the foul line. Terrific footwork. He just goes one-on-one, -on -one, and even Robert, Robert, Robert Roberts can't help out there. And this is uh, Conger in the low post. He just does a great job of uh, scoring on Langston Galloway. Uh, Mark Schmidt, who went to Boston College. He was a pretty good basketball player during his days at Boston College. This is his track. To Oleon. He was the head coach of Robert Morris and won some games at Robert Morris. He did a very nice job at a tough place. Mike Rice took over for him. This is his fifth year at St. Bonaventure, but he was in the Atlantic 10 from 94 to 2001 with Xavier. And also was a Penn State assistant in the Atlantic, in the Atlantic 10. 10. Okay, I have to, you know, kind of Always walk forget you about back that. Uh, memory lane here, but uh, that, I was at St. Joseph's from 90 to 95. Mark was the assistant coach at Penn State during that time when Penn State was a member of the Atlantic 10 Conference. So, you know, we were just talking about the Atlantic 10 and how it's evolved over the years and how it looks like there's going to be another evolution right. of this as a result of changes at uh, Temple University. Three-point lead for St. Bonaventure. Under four minutes to play. Jones into the paint. Tough shot. He kind of marked his body a little bit just to get some space. I think good players have the ability to do that. We've seen Khalif Wyatt do it. He's sometimes a little bit off balance. 
But Carl Jones has a unique ability to get off shots against much bigger players. 41 points for Carl Jones. Now Nicholson trying to answer. Double teamed by Aiken and Kanasevic. Now Aiken's got to find Cook again. Shot clock down to 10, and St. Bonaventure will reset. Kloof open for three. First three of the day for the bodies. What a tough shot. Great composure by St. Bonaventure. Nicholson was double teamed in the, the last time he touched the basketball, and he wisely got rid of it. Here's Jones off the screen by Kanasevic. I don't know what was better, the shot or the screen. That was a heck of a screen by Kanasevic. 24 points for Jones, 19 in the second half. That was textbook. 67-66. Whistle blows, foul underneath. That'll be uh, number four on Kanasevic. He thought he had his fourth earlier, but they then gave it to Ronald Roberts. Well, here we go. We have two minutes and 40 seconds left in this quarterfinal game. How about Kloof with the first three of the day for St. Bonaventure? And then off the screen, Jones with the answer. I can't believe this bikini still fits me. Yeah, I can't believe it either. What did you say? <laughs> I can't believe this bikini still fits me. You've never looked better. Thanks, honey. Hurt in a car, call William Attar. A recent study asked, if you or someone you know were hurt in an automobile accident, what attorney or law firm would you call? The number one choice? William Matar. William Matar. Hurt in a car? Call William Matar. The results are in. More people would call William Matar than any other law firm. Hurt in a car? Call William Matar. 444-4444. Helping people. It's what we do. When you need tires, think Schultz. You have a lot riding on your tires, so come to the experts at Schultz. Free mounting and balancing, free tire rotations, and buy with confidence that we have the lowest prices on tires in the area. We carry all your trusted brands like Firestone, BF Goodrich, Michelin, Goodyear, and many more. When you need tires, think Schultz. 11 locations to serve you. Schultz, best selection, best price guaranteed. St. Bonaventure fans have made their way down from Orleans, New York, and their team's on top 67-61. We talked about the, the heavyweight fights that were here at the uh, Boardwalk Hall. Well, this has been a heavyweight battle right now. I mean, look at the particulars in this game. Well, it sure feels like it, Tom. And, and you look, look at these uh, kind of contrast and strategies here. St. Joseph's trying to score from the outside, yep. and St. Bonaventure really trying to score around the basket. And for the most part, St. Joseph's has handled the, the ball very well with only three turnovers. Arturo Thundergatti, 15 fights here, including uh, uh, world championship fights here at Boardwalk Hall. And this is like a, a boxing match right now. And you see the, the reset for today's ball game. St. Joseph's with the possession area. No one's giving ground. I mean, it, when it looks like somebody has the upper hand, the other team comes right back. And it's just been a spectacular basketball game here. We saw a terrific one in the first game here this afternoon. We're seeing another one right now. UMass upset the number one seed, the Temple Owls. They'll play tomorrow's semifinal against the winner of this ball game. Andrew Nicholson, 24 points, nine rebounds. He misses that free throw. Well, this is what part of the storyline for today. 24 lead changes, eight ties, and now we've got a two-point game. Two and a half to play. For a chance to move on to the semifinal. I don't know if lead changes is a stat that anybody keeps a record of, but in my mind, that's a record for, certainly for me. I was marveling at the fact that the UMass Temple game, the first one, there were 11 lead changes. Panasonic offensive board got everybody off their feet, missed the shot, got it back, put it back! Now that's perseverance. Yeah, that's determination because, you know, he had some big guys there trying to stop him from getting that basket. 
And he was able to get kind of a, enough of an angle to, to finish the shot because originally when he got the rebound, he was underneath the basket. So tied at 68, 145 to play here in the second half. Whistle blows, timeout called by Mark Schmidt. Well, this is what Halil Kanasevic is able to do. But well, he's on top of his game. Yeah, it really is. He, you know, you can see how he just kind of takes a dribble to get a better angle. He misses a shot, but he sticks with it. And, you know, you, that's a tough ta task when you have Andrew Nicholson there trying to block your shot. Well, Phil Martelli was your assistant coach at St. Joseph's, and now he's the all-time leader in wins in 17 years. Five NCAA tournaments, including an Elite Eight. Back in 2004 with Jameer Nelson, Delonte West, led the, the Hawks almost to the Final Four when they lost to Oklahoma State up at the Meadowlands. And there you go. 95 is when he began. That's when he took over for you. 320 wins. Passed Bill Ferguson earlier this year. Yeah, Jack Ramsey, who, uh, you know, legendary coach on Hawk Hill. Jim Boyle, a good friend of all of ours, who uh, passed away way too early. And Jack McKinney, who went on to coach in the NBA with the Los Angeles Lakers, among others. From Martelli's record in the Atlantic 10. He likes this team. He likes the way they like each other. So that's hard to teach. Yeah, and I don't think that was always the case over the last couple of years, but I think he has the program right where he wants it. And his two sons are coaching in college yeah. basketball. Young Phil and Jimmy. We're going to call a foul on Kanasevic for pushing Nicholson. That should be his fifth. And Halil Kanasevic is done. Phil Martelli is beside himself that they would call a foul in that spot. Well, there's Jeff Farnell, the former St. Joe's player, who's uh, trying to get the team to come over. It's been a tough afternoon for Kenneth Evick. He really had a tough assignment in trying to guard Nicholson without fouling him. And he did a terrific job, I think, of trying to keep Nicholson as far away from the basket as possible. Eight points, eight rebounds for Halil Kenneth Evick. Tied at 68, 132 to play. St. Joseph's with three timeouts left. St. Bonaventure with two. And there you see the foul situation. Both teams are shooting two for the rest of the game. Yeah, and St. Joseph's and both St. Bonaventure have plenty of timeouts remaining. You know, I think when sometimes you decide who you're going to pair up against a guy like Nicholson, you know that a guy like Kenneth Seven has a chance to foul out of the game. So I think you're very conscious of that when you decide how the matchups are going to look out. And, you know, unfortunately, Nicholson puts so much pressure on the defense. Well, this is a 25-point game for Nicholson. Quarles checks back in for Chris Wilson. We kind of had the feeling the way this game was going that it was going to come down to the wire, and we are at the end of the wire. Nicholson made one, missed one. And now he doesn't get tired. 25 points, nine rebounds. He's been all over the place. Nine of 17 from the floor. Each team has missed five free throws in the ball game. Galloway, Aiken, thought about the three. Jones got some room from 16, no good. And Nicholson with the rebound. Now, St. Joseph does not do anything here but play good defense, right? Yeah, I think you just want to stay in front of your man. And I think at this point, you really don't want to give up easy baskets in the lane. Andrew Nicholson with that rebound reaches 25 points, 10 rebounds, a double-double. And Mark Schmidt will use one of his final two timeouts. Eighth time this year that Nicholson has picked up a double-double. I was at the game against Duquesne when he had 23 points and 21 rebounds. It was a remarkable effort. The second half alone was as if he was playing Nerf basketball in his basement. He was getting every rebound possible. It was the first 2020 game at St. Bonaventure since Bob Lanier's 34 points and 27 rebounds in 1967. It was 21 points, 23 rebounds as the Bonnies blew out Duquesne 69 to 48. 
feels like a man on sports. Well, you know, he's had some really impressive games, even in addition to that, against Dayton. He had 30 points and 13 rebounds. But look at his numbers here tonight. 25 points, 9 of 17, 10 rebounds. This is a guy that scored over 2,000 points. And how about the final eight games of the season, really, where he put this team on his back? He became the player of the year and well-deserved, but in the last eight games, he averaged over 25 points a game. And here we go, the final 50 seconds of the ball game. 14, 13 left there in the shot clock. Nicholson fade away, jumper short. I don't know if that's the shot he wanted, but now it's opened the door for St. Joseph. Well, that was a poor choice on his part. And First poor choice of the day. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, uh, he made a fade away early in the game, but he's capable of getting a much better shot. Well, the number one seed has already been eliminated from the Atlantic 10 tournament. Temple lost to UMass 77 to 71. Now the number five seed and the number four seed have locked horns. And the games come down to the final 36 seconds. Later on tonight, St. Louis will take on LaSalle and Xavier will take on Dayton. The number one seed has lost for the second consecutive year. So that means that this tournament, the reputation is, is that it's kind of wide open from year to year. And if you look at some of the past champions, the one seed has won four times since 2000. But, you know, the three, two, four, and even the 10 seed has been able to pick up a victory. Yeah, and I think that's why the argument can be made that uh, this, this league, which is so balanced, deserves more than three uh, teams to represent them in the NCAA tournament. Thirty-six point eight seconds left. We are at Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey. It's the second game of the day, the Atlantic Ten quarterfinal. Along with John Griffin, I'm Tom McCarthy. It's been a pleasure to be with you for these first two ball games. Temple lost in Game One to UMass. Now St. Joseph's and St. Bonaventure have wound it down to the last thirty-six point eight seconds. It'll be St. Joseph's ball. Andrew Nicholson, twenty-five points, ten rebounds today. He has been everything that they advertised. Well, Tom, it'll be interesting to see who steps up for either team because at the end of the last time these two teams played, somebody made a big play, whether it was C.J. Aiken, Nicholson, Matthew Wright. And now an offensive foul call to Langston Galloway. I thought that maybe the secondary defender was in the circle. I don't know if Phil Martelli thought that or not. Matt Wright was the defender. Galloway was past him, and it was Nicholson. Nope, he was outside the arc. And you know what? It looked like he had pretty good position. He was pretty much waiting there. Not a popular call. Now St. Joseph's will play this full court pressure and try to force a turnover or put someone on the foul line. 24 seconds to play. Ron Roberts is on the ball. He's got a long wingspan. St. Bonaventure has not turned it over in the last nine minutes. Not a bad guy to foul, they just couldn't get him. Here comes Charlon Cook. He's fouled up top. 17.2 to play. Now, even if he makes the, these two, it's still a one, one possession game with 17 seconds left. Yes, and then Mark Schmidt is left to make that very lonely decision. What would you do? Foul or let him go? Well, I tend to just let him go, but that's, you know, sometimes I second guess myself. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I guess I'm uh, inclined to foul and put the guy on the foul line. I hate to, you know, when you have a three point lead, let this game go into overtime because somebody makes the three. Now, if you remember going back nine days, I mean, there were a couple threes made to get this game in either overtime right. or second overtime, so who knows? Booth has had himself a pretty Pretty good day, 19 points. Still at 19. It's a one possession game. Phil Martelli wants a timeout. With 14 seconds left here in the second half. He'll use a, at least a moment to work the officials before he brings his team together. Will he go for two or three? Because they, they can shoot the three. Well, if you're asking me, uh, you know, I just try to get the basket however I could get it. So I want a good shot. 
And, uh, you know, I'd like to take the shot with enough time to get an offensive rebound. So I don't want to necessarily wait till uh, four or five seconds or three seconds to go. If I can get a shot with 10 seconds, nine seconds to go, it gives me a chance to get a second shot. Well, you see the game reset. Each team with a timeout left. Free throws, double free throws for both. Double bonus. Possession arrow is for St. Joseph. And you know what? Kind of Sevic being on the bench, I think, hurts St. Joseph's in this situation because he's such a good passer. So I suspect St. Joe's will kind of open up the court here a little bit and give a guy like Carl Jones an opportunity to drive. Perhaps Langston Galloway and see if, at the worst, he can get to the foul line. Determination, heart palpitations. There's a whole lot of emotions going on. Quarles, Jones, Aiken, Roberts, Galloway for St. Joseph's. Kluth, Conger, Cook, Nicholson, Wright for St. Bonaventure. Here we go. A two-point game. Jones with the ball. Seven seconds on Cook. Driving. Gets his man off the street. Nicholson with the block. Cook with the save. Wright has it on the sidelines, and he is fouled with six-tenths of a second left. And St. Joseph's will not have enough time, even if both these free throws don't go down. Boy, Carl Jones is the one guy that was going to make this decision to drive, but he had such a terrible angle. And when he gets pinned here along the baseline, and you have a guy like Nicholson who's just waiting to block the shot, you really didn't have much uh, of an alternative. You know, it's much better for him to keep the ball in the center of the court and try to drive from somewhere in the center. At least he could kind of maybe even stop and pull up for a jumper. Once he got locked in on that baseline, he had nowhere to go. So Matt Wright just made the first free throw. Now the second one. And he missed it. The rebound by Galloway. That'll do it. St. Bonaventure behind the Atlantic 10's Player of the Year will move on to the semifinals of the Atlantic 10 tournament where tomorrow afternoon they will take on the UMass Minutemen. It's the first time the bodies have been in the semifinals since the year 2000. What a job Mark Schmidt has done this year. What a job Andrew Nicholson has done helping to resurrect this program. The eighth seed will take on the four seed tomorrow afternoon here at Boardwalk Hall. Our second session coming up later on, St. Louis against LaSalle, Xavier against Dayton. Our final score, 71-68. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network. UMass and St. Bonaventure will meet in semifinal number one tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern. The final score, St. Bonaventure 71, St. Joseph 68. So long, everybody, from Atlantic City.